Um, you mentioned uh, McKinsey's. Uh, do you find... I'm nothing against them, they're just expensive. Uh, I, <laughs> I was going to ask you just that. Um, do you find management consultants are helpful to entrepreneurs, or do you find they actually smother uh, entrepreneurs? I, I, I've done startups where the first thing we did is we hired an expensive management consultant, and half a million pounds later, you had a book that, you know, <laughs> you, you, you didn't even read. <laughs> Somehow I, I, I've decided, and it doesn't mean it's the only way to do it, but I've decided that unless I devote my own time to understand the business, it's not worth starting it. Commissioning a study by someone else to learn the market on your behalf, sometimes it's done by big companies to cover their backside. I mean, that's how most of these studies end up into being. Someone is looking at a new sector and they hire someone to go and analyze it. Um, you know, I think that you know, on the basis that I'm risking my own money, I either have to find the time to understand it myself, or I shouldn't risk my own money. Thank you. Aside from your father's capital and guidance, what three factors would you attribute your <laughs> success to? Luck. <laughs> um, um, I, I go back to that trip to America and seeing Southwest. You know, keep your eyes open, travel, find the best of class. You know, don't be ashamed to imitate them, copy them. That's two. And hard work. <laughs> Is that free? Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Stellis, you mentioned uh, the airports uh, earlier, and you've also mentioned taxes. Do you think airports are a threat now to EasyJet in the sense of? Uh, not paying enough for having enough staff security hassle factor, and that's causing the loadings to go down. There's no doubt that going through an airport in the last couple of years is a lot less pleasant than it was a few years ago. Um, the problem with the airports is that they are not consumer-facing businesses. They charge airlines, not passengers. The fact we try to make it transparent and pass it on and everything else, most people think that because they paid EasyJet you know, 50 pounds, whatever is the price, they are entitled to fly through the airport you know, uninterrupted without having to queue and everything else. The problem is that we don't own the airport. And the airport business, uh, you know, it's an infrastructure business. The less infrastructure they can put in place, the more money they, 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 the more profit they will make. Uh, or we, we, we get um, another paradox in the... Um, in the regulated businesses like the BAA, which is the owner of seven of the biggest airports in, in, in the UK, where their regulation is based on how much they invest and therefore they, for example, they're planning to overbuild Stansted because if they build a much bigger <coughs> runway, for example, than they need, they can charge more for it. So I, I've always been very frustrated in the, in the relationship between the passenger, the airline and the airport because the airport hides behind the airline but causes most of the trouble. Now, again, it's, it's something we can spend a, an entire hour arguing about. I'm sure they have their own excuses and defenses, but um, it, it's, a, it's a very um, confrontational relationship, airports and airlines. You should ask Michael O'Leary to talk about airports. He's, a, he's, even, he's using more colorful language than me. <laughs> the lady up at the top. Hello, Silas. Um, my name's Karen Darby. I'm from Simply Switch. I'm really interested in how you built the Easy brand because when I set my company up, I called it Simply Energy because I thought that's all we wanted to do. And then we started to do other services. But all the good names like Simply Telephone, Simply Home Phone, Simply Broadband had gone. So we had to call ourselves Simply Switch. And we have board meetings where we're Simply Board, but that's not quite the same. <laughs> um, and I just wondered whether by building, you've got 17 easy companies, it's actually going to get harder now uh, using the easy name. And um, what I've done is I've come up with two ideas for you to help you out here. Um, Go on, man. <laughs> yeah, one would be a, an organic uh, fresh juice business, which you could call Easy Peasy Lemon Squeezy. <laughs> And another one, if you're interested, would be a uh, toupee business, which you could call Easy or Easy Not Wearing a Wig. <laughs> so, um, I think he's talking about us. <laughs> let me know if you're interested. Uh, um, you want me to talk about the wig <laughs> or the IP side of things? Yeah. 
Um, I understand the, the, the British Library Center is about IP as well, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So it's a very topical subject. Um, I think that starting with a, a generic name like Simply or Easy um, sounds like the path of least resistance. In other words, you, it's easier to pronounce and everything else. But you have to spend a lot more money, both in marketing, uh, in public relations, and in um, lawyer fees to actually end up owning it. You know, the, uh, the use of a, an ordinary word from the English vocabulary, like easy or simply, means that I have spent a fortune get, obtaining trademarks on that name. And there's no, there's no shortcut, unfortunately. You have to um, spend a lot of money marketing and making yourself known so people identify you and your services and products with that name and nobody else. And then you get a trademark from <coughs> the authorities and then you, that, that's your monopoly certificate. And it took us 12 years to build a, a, a portfolio of about 700 of them. So it, it has been a very expensive and long process. I, I suspect Branson must have done something similar over the years. You know, the word virgin was an ordinary word of the English vocabulary and has now become his own. So, um, you know, good luck with making simply your own. It, it, it will take a lot of money. Um, I don't think it's a coincidence that both of the names I mentioned here, Virgin and Easy, started with an airline. Airlines have an amazing ability to establish a brand. You know, they're just big assets. They fly around. People, um, people um, sort of are very aware of the airline they fly with, trusted with their lives. You know, so... Um, you know, starting, it would have been difficult to start with a pizza business and then start an airline. <laughs>